Hi guys, Tracy here, and I have another scrapbooking process video for you. In this video, I'm going to show you another idea for how to use those large chipboard words by Dear Lizzie that came in the hip kit for the month of October. And I'm also going to show you just what a dirty lying cheater I can be. So stay tuned. So here I am starting with these two photos of my daughters. This is my daughter and her best friend, and they went for Halloween as bears. They both wore different bear onesies. And my other daughter went as a pegacorn, which is part pegasus, part unicorn. And there's her photo right there. And uh, she also was wearing a onesie. It was the year of the onesies this year. My daughters are getting a little old. They're still not too old for Halloween, but they definitely were not really interested in any kind of elaborate costumes and so this is what they wanted to do so this is what they did. I trimmed down the the, the two photos here are two different sizes. Um, this one is 3.5 by 3.5 and I inadvertently cut it to like I, I didn't leave a white border on the edge of it. I was wanting to use a challenge and I thought about using my wheel of wonder but then I decided I would use Mo's tic-tac-toe challenge. Now this is the November tic-tac-toe challenge and uh, this is a challenge that Mo po posts in our Facebook group. That's the Mercy Tiara's 27 day challenge Facebook group and so I'm going to be scrapbooking with this challenge as my guide guide and I'm just thinking about how I might want to use this challenge because you know you can do any of the three lines and I actually can't use the center one because it says to use a black and white photo and I really didn't want to use black and white photos of these two in particular I, I just really love the hues of them they're both they both have filters on them and they look very retro and and beautiful and I, I just love them the way they are so that cuts out a good portion of the tic-tac-toe challenge because that center square is not I, I can't follow that one I'm thinking about using a sketch for this maybe one of those two sketches and I'm actually not going to end up following either of those sketches but that's how I'm starting off with just those two ideas and so I didn't put the sketches up because it didn't um, it didn't end up being relevant or else I would have put the sketches up so I am actually thinking about instead of doing any three in a row I'm going to be, do the outside four corners because that is really cheating for tic-tac-toe and I guess I'm not really following the challenge by doing that. Um, I was live streaming with my Patreons while I did this and I asked Mo who was actually there. She's the one who made the challenge and she said um, cheater not cheater type of situation. <laughs> I don't know. I think I'm cheating but I'm going to follow the outside four corners and my point was that it's actually harder to do four things on the tic-tac-toe than it is to do three so I'm compensating a little bit at least for that. These are the two the two sketches that I have picked out and I just picked those out because I thought they would work with a large title and I knew I wanted to use one of those large titles and I'm thinking my title is going to be magical and maybe magical creatures. I'm going to end up changing it to magical critters eventually. These thickers come in the hip kit and I love them. They are called Spooktacular and they are a matted gold foil with black foam underneath and I adore them. So here I am deciding to do the the three centers which is use a bold busy pattern, use multiple layers behind your photo, use tags, and then the bottom one was to use either a doily or a floral pattern. So those are my four tasks that I'm trying to fulfill. Now this paper by Pink Fresh Studio with those triangles all over it, I have an idea for what I want to do with that so I'm going to take that out and use it for another layout. If I can find a picture, I'm looking for, for the right picture for that. And so this paper here really popped out at me. It stuck out when I reviewed the kit a couple of weeks ago and I definitely wanted to use it for a background. As I layer my photos, I want to layer them so that the, the picture of, of Sophie is not covering the spider on the picture of the two girls because I like that their house was decorated that way. That was actually not at our house, it's at her friend's house. So I found another one of those papers. So no, maybe I just pulled it out to talk to the people on my live stream. I can't remember what that was all about, but I'm not going to use that triangle paper. So this background is also by Pink Fresh. It's from the Escape the Ordinary collection. And I just love those little chevroni shapes that go down the side 
like that, I think it gives a really nice anchoring spot. And uh, it makes such an interesting background that you really don't have to do a whole lot of scrapbooking. It makes for a very simple page and an easy page, one that you can throw together really quickly or one that you can throw together while you have a bunch of people watching you scrapbook. <laughs> Uh, so I am sipping on some coffee nog as I scrap there and I'm just thinking about what patterns I might want to use on this page because one of my challenges is that I have to have multiple layers behind my photos and my first instinct here is to not put any layers behind my photos but I really can't change my challenge at this point because I've already kind of ruled out using the center square by not using black and white photos and so if I'm going to do this thing I'm going to have to put some layers behind the photos. So what I thought I would do is grab some tissues. I keep tissues across the room from where I sit so I just had to scooch back there and get them and I have this blue tissue paper from the hip kit club. All of your boxes come with that. This one with the numbers on it is from a shoe box and then the black and white polka dot one is from Felicity Jane and I'm thinking I'm going to go with the, this really bold polka dot pattern one of the challenges is to use a bold pattern so um so this will kind of meet one of those challenge criterias and I'm going to just tear it with my ruler which gives me a nice you know casually torn edge and I'm going to use it as a mat so I want it to be quite quite a bit bigger than my photos because I'm going to put some other papers between my photos and that tissue I don't know which papers it will be this one is a floral which is one of those ta one of the things on the challenge um, but it's a little bit too florally I'd rather have something a little bit more graphic to go with those uh, chevrons over on the side and so I'm going to choose this abstract floral as somebody on my live stream called it and I think that's a really good descriptor descriptor and I want to add a black mat between my photos and whatever comes next so I just went into my scraps there grabbed a bunch of black and this one looks like it's going to work as a reasonable photo mat. I just want those photos to look a little bit off kilter like not lined up exactly and I'm tearing a wide mat and one thing that I do as I'm matting things is I tend to err on the side of leaving my mats larger if I'm thinking about it because I can easily trim down a mat but it's hard to add. I mean you could just start all over again but I I would rather not so I like to kind of trim things down pretty slowly so at first I was thinking about leaving this mat a rectangular and uh, I've decided pretty quickly that I'm going to cut off those two chunks so that the shape of the mat follows the shape of the photos and that accentuates the shape of those photos as somebody mentioned on my stream and it just brings them together and makes them look like a single unit on the page. And now I'm going to tear this abstract floral paper so that it's a little bit bigger than the matted photos but smaller than the polka dotted tissue paper. And that tissue paper comes in a Felicity Jane kit when you buy it or at least it used to. I've only bought one Felicity, Felicity Jane kit in my life and I loved it. Uh, so I held on to and cherished the tissue paper. I have used it a couple of times, but uh, I think this is my last piece of it. So you, you saw that I kind of cut that chunk of tissue paper from a folded piece of larger tissue paper. And uh, because it's all folded up, I'm just going to use a little stapler here to staple it to my background papers. And I just peeled up the photos as I did that so I wasn't stapling through the photos. Now it's going to tear that with my ruler but I decided to tear it with my scissors because I suspected it might not tear all that well and I didn't want it to be really jaggedy. And so look at all those layers. I think I met the top, the top center of that challenge which is to add multiple layers behind your photo. I think there are multiple layers there uh, if you count all those layers of tissue as well as the pattern paper and then some matting as well. 
having a quick look at what other pattern papers are there, but I'm actually not going to use them. At this point, I think I'm going to abandon the sketches. I, I thought about using the second sketch, but I'm actually not even going to follow that one very much. So I'll use a sketch another time, maybe next time. I really like these, uh, these rubber pieces. And so I'm thinking about using one of the black ones there and I have some chipboard here and I definitely want to use these stars because I think they go nicely with the word magical. And so since I know I'm going to use the word magical, let's think about my second part of my title. And I decided to go with creatures and then I thought I made a last minute switch to the word critters only because I thought that critters was a little bit smaller. It's not much smaller, but it's a little bit smaller than the word creatures. Not only is it a letter less, but it's also, it has some I's and T's in it that I think are going to kind of take up less space. Ideally, I would love for the word critters to fit between the descender in G and the, the way that the L kind of turns into a descender there. L's don't usually have descenders, but this one does. And so I'm going to spell out critters and you can see pretty quickly that critters is not going to fit in that space, but I'm obviously the, I need the word anyway. So I'm go just going to keep on spelling it out here and I'm just putting it on a piece of waxed paper so that I can move it around on my page and test it out in different places. So I can't quite decide what I'm going to do there. I could split it up, like put crit and then ers or crit and then ters or I don't know. I don't really like that. So not in this case anyways. So I really like it being more horizontal like this. And I'm thinking I might just overlap it oh, either over or under the word magical. So now that I have critters picked out, let's figure out what we're going to do with the word magical because it's that beautiful white chipboard from Dear Lizzie and it accepts. So I'm just pointing out there that I have uh, also used a busy bold pattern, which is that bold polka dot. And I've used a floral, which is that abstract floral. So ticking right along on my tic-tac-toe challenge, even though I'm cheating, <laughs> um, it is easy to do a challenge if you're willing to cheat. That's what I've learned from this, from this page. This is one of the most beautiful color media that I have in my stash, including everything that I have of all makes and brands. It is called Lapis Dance and it is Creamies and it is a watercolor. It's kind of like a little pot of solid watercolor. You spray some water on it to activate it. And then as you see, it becomes this lovely, lovely shade of blue. I'm actually not a huge fan of blue, but this blue is gorgeous. As you can see, I mean, it's just beautiful. If you put it on dark enough, it becomes this beautiful navy inky blue. And then of course, if you put more water in it, it just gets lighter and lighter. It's just so beautiful. I love this product so much. And it is a shimmers paint product. And so as you can see, my first instinct was to make this one be very watercolory looking so that it looks kind of blotchy with lots of differences between the darks and the lights and uh, kind of letting my, I'm using a water brush here, but I'm also just, I have a pool of liquid in the top of the paint as well. So uh, I can add more water to it by squeezing on that, on that water brush as I go. And I was thinking about kind of doing a similar thing to what I did last time. Now, my last layout using these large chipboard pieces uh, was called Adventures at Girl Guide Camp. And so I'll link to that video because that shows another way that you can use these letters with mists. But here I wanted to paint it. And at first I was going with this kind of watercolory, almost like an ombre effect where it's darker at the bottom and lighter on the tops of the letters. And so here I am, I'm just showing it to you and I'm going to clean up. And the, my problem with that is that I love that dark blue so much. And here I am, I'm going to put it away. I'm, oh, I'm just showing you that there's also a, the color kit from the hip kit is where I got this. And uh, the color kit came with a beautiful gold version of that paint as well. It's called something different. I think it's called inky, inkly. In inks hang on I will find out it is called inklings with a z at the end 
And so what I'm talking about here is how I, first of all, there are some white edges showing and I just want to cover those up. I don't want it to look so white on the edges. Um, and I'm, I'm just kind of deciding that I, I love the darkness of this color so much that why, why use the lighter color at all when you adore the darker color? So I'm going back and I've added some more water to that, to that pot of, of product. And I am really getting lots and lots of pigment on my brush. Whoops getting lots and lots of pigment on my brush and really filling in these this uh, chipboard. And it, this chipboard absorbs color so beautifully and it doesn't, at first I thought, if I put too much media on this, is it going to start to disintegrate? And is like the top layer of the chipboard going to start to separate off from the bottom layers? And that doesn't happen at all. These seem to be really well developed with mixed media in mind. It can really handle a lot of water. And so I keep adding a little bit more water to that, to that little pot of creamies. Again, the color is Lapis Dance. And I think that this is going to make for a much more bold title than the kind of variegated color would have. You really see the difference between the word magic and then the AL there. It really looks quite bold compared to the way that I had it. So I just need to finish that up and I'm going back and adding to the little edges that were still showing a little bit of, of white, just so that no matter what angle you look at this title, you, it will look finished and complete where it started out as white. I really don't want any of those white edges to show, to kind of give it away that I, that I altered this. I want it to look, look like it belongs this way. So I'm just touching up any little spots. And now I'm cleaning out my brush. So I'm just kind of keep running, like squeezing the water out of it until it runs clear. And now I'm going to do that with a piece of paper towel. And white paper towel is great because you can tell if there's any, any, any pigment still left in your brush because it'll come out on the white paper towel. It'll be obvious that there's blue in there. So I'm cleaning up. That was my Tri Art palette that I do a lot of my mixed media on. And I really love how that gold, that matted gold thicker looks with that really beautiful blue color. I think those two colors coordinate really beautifully together. And they also pick up on other colors that are in that chevron paper that's in my background. So I liked the look of critters there on the waxed paper so much that I decided I would cut a little um, vellum border for my word critters like a, a vellum banner upon which my word critters could could sit is what I meant to say there. And so, oh, my daughter brought me a fresh cup of coffee. She um, made it for me in our new Keurig machine. It's not that new, but it's a little new. And uh, I take a very specific coffee, like, because I don't like the pods that we got. So I have to I make a bigger cup and then I also add some water to it. So, so uh, she did a good job of making me my very specific coffee. <laughs> um, so here I go. I'm just going to transfer these letter stickers right over to the piece of vellum. Vellum is really easy. I was thinking I could use my thicker alignment tool here, but vellum is so easy to uh, line up things on just using your grid paper, behind, like your grid mat underneath. And now while I am doing this, my husband Scott is next door putting in some doors. He's in, We're finishing our basement and so there's a lot of construction going on. I'm just going to cut a slit in each end and then make a fish banner by fishtail banner by just kind of cutting in from the corners to the slits. And that was a little bit too tall. So I'm just going to take a sliver off the top, even though that makes my fishtails a little bit off. That's okay. Now you'll see that my camera keeps going out of focus. That's because the camera itself, which is attached to my ceiling, is shaking because there's construction going on and the walls of my room are shaking. Every time my camera goes fuzzy, it's because he's hammering next door. And uh, yeah, so that's going to cause me some trouble eventually. But for now, it's not causing trouble yet. 
Uh, so then I'm just going to adhere my background down, and, not my background, but adhere my layers down. And then I'm using Tombow Mono Multi to stick this word. And the word is going to overlap. So it's going to go over some of that. There, there's, there's the banging again. Uh, it goes over my layers and it also sits on the background paper. So it kind of it's big so it's okay like it can span those things and not like I don't have to put pop dots underneath the bottom part I put a little bit too much glue here um my Tombow Mono Multi is new and I keep forgetting that I don't need to squeeze as hard as I did with my last bottle which was almost empty for a long time and so I keep overdoing it with my glue these days so I will just pull it off carefully and very carefully dab up some of that glue because I really didn't need that much and I didn't want it to look kind of oozy, especially where it's on vellum and you can see through it a little bit. I just want to get that placement so that it's right under magical but not kind of crowding it too much. And now the last of those four center spots that I was planning to use is to use either tabs or tags. And I, um, I also really like these hearts. So I, there's, I put the tic-tac-toe up again so that you could see the last one that I have to do there if I'm doing all the centers is tabs or tags. So I have these tags. Ooh, and now things are starting to fall off my, <laughs> off my wall. I have my Making Memories Embellishment Center right up above where I scrapbook. <laughs> and things were starting to fall off of it from the hammering <laughs> next door. So yeah, it was a little bit of a, of a construction zone here. I'm just looking at what tags there are here. Everything is shaking and oh, <laughs> that stamp comes flying out at me. <laughs> oh my goodness. So I'm looking at what tags are there and I'm going to start with this the striped tag. These tags came from the Pink Fresh Studio. Um, what is that collection called again? Escape the Ordinary, I think it's yeah, escape, escape the Ordinary. And so I layered those two tags like that. And my first plan was that I would journal on them, but they looked so nice tucked up there. And I like how they kind of mi mirror or mimic the L, like the angle of the L. And so I'm just going to leave them there. And obviously that doesn't leave me any room for journaling, but I'll put my journaling someplace else. And now I'm at the embellishment phase. I really like that little flower right there, but it's not going to make it. it I... I know right from the beginning that the embellishing on this one is going to be pretty minimal. These large title pages, whether it's a long title that I make with my, and there's my unicorn. She's wearing the same outfit, by the way. Um, that's my daughter, Sophie, helping me out. Um, all of these pages that I do with the really large titles, whether it's these large titles. Now, here's a rubber piece that I really wanted to use, but it's it kind of got like slimy. The, the, the adhesive on the back side of it turns a little yucky and because of that I didn't it would leave residue like a really sticky difficult to remove residue and so I didn't want to try it out anywhere because I didn't want to regret placing it so I just decided not to use it on this particular page after all. Uh, I'm looking at my tic-tac-toe and making sure I've got all of my four centers that I had wanted to use and they're all covered so that's good and um, yeah so when I I keep going back to this idea which, and which I hope I will spit out finally this time so what I'm trying to say is that when I make a layout that has a large title whether it's these chipboard word pieces or something I've cut with my crick with my cricket with my cameo or a series of thickers that I've made into a really large title I almost always go very very minimal on my decorating and embellishing on those pages because the title kind of is it right like the title is the title and the embellishment because it's such a huge part of the design of the page and I think that it really allows the title to to kind of really take the focus that it that it ought to take uh, by leaving all of the other embellishing embellishing to a minimal so there I finally got that that idea out for you guys <laughs> 
Uh, so I'm putting two clusters of three stars in up by the tags and down by the word critters, by the S in the word critters. And now I am going to add just one extra stray star just to add something unexpected somewhere. And it does make a bit of a triangle around the page as well bet between those three spots where, where stars are. I just thought if I put three there, it's going to be way too contrived and... Uh, I don't know, design principle E. I, I don't know. I don't like to always follow all of those rules, so I just put one there. I'm liking how this page looks, and I'm thinking I do have a few words I want to say about it besides just magical critters. So I'm thinking, is this it for embellishing, and where am I going to put my journaling? So I just pointed to where the journaling is going to go, so I grabbed my Sharpie pen. And I, which is different than a Sharpie marker. Sharpie markers will soak into, um, pe into regular paper because they're designed to go on slick surfaces. So this is a Sharpie pen, which is designed more for paper. And my journaling says Halloween 2017 was the year of the onesie costume. Mac and Liv went as bears. Soph went as a pegacorn, of course. So easy and so cute. And I started to write unicorn and she was right there in her pegacorn costume to correct me and remind me that it was a pegacorn costume. So I just fixed it on the fly. And I don't mind those kinds of mistakes in my scrapbooks. They're my scrapbooks and it doesn't matter to me if there's mistakes in them. I'm actually wearing my Be Human t-shirt as I scrapbooked this, so it was, which is all about uh, that logo, Be Human, is all about embracing your imperfections and being true to who you are in imperfections and all. So I tried to do that in my scrapbooking as well. So here is the completed layout. The last thing that I have to do is just add some string to those tags. I do like to add string to my tags almost every time I use them. So I just have this gold and white twine that I got from Michaels. It's just Recollections brand. And I just put them through each of those two tags and then cut them so that they're not too long and distracting with the rest of the layout. And here it is, all done. And oh, I forgot to mention, I put a little die cut arrow that says wander this way and it's just pointing at the bears. And there's how it looks overall. I'm really pleased with how this one turned out. It was really fun to make and I am so loving those chipboard words. I can't wait to do a third layout with them. I think I'll do one today actually. So this one came together really easily and it was a lot of fun to work with the hip kit from the month of October, especially getting a chance to combine all the different letter options that come in this kit. So there it is. In a minute, you will see some other videos that you can link to. Please subscribe if you haven't already. I try to bring new content to my channel every week, usually in the form of a process video or something else. I hope you guys enjoyed this page. Take care and have a really great scrappy week.